Now, uh, Tanya Onkovich is a name you'll probably recognise. She writes God Spots for us. In fact, out of all the God Spots that play out on Star, she's the one that I actually get people requesting. They're like, who's that? Who was that lady that was speaking? Now, Tanya is a speaker. She's an author and an executive coach. She's written a number of books, and her latest is called From Grief to Greatness, The Art of Overcoming Adversity. Tanya joins me live in the studio today. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Lovely to have you here. It's so wonderful to be here with you, finally. Yeah, you and I have sort of uh, weaved in and out of our lives a little bit, each other, you know, sort of from a distance. And Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to have the opportunity to sort of sit down, or in this case, we're standing up, and have a a good conversation with you. So really uh, good to have you here with us today. Now, Tanya, I remember when my mum was still alive, she died about seven years ago, and she had this one week where within this one week she actually went to three funerals, and she was in her early 80s, and I was quite horrified that she had all of that to deal with. And I remember her saying to me in that time frame that death is part of life. Mm. And I was actually really shocked, but it's true, and I I feel that 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 statement would resonate with you. Absolutely. And if we can accept that, the sooner we can accept that, the sooner we will actually move through life. And I had my first taste of that, obviously, when my late husband, Phil, passed away nearly 18 years ago. And to be able to accept that, and then all of a sudden, so many other people around me started to pass away from various illnesses. And I got used to what you might say and and came to a place of accepting this is life. Mm. Yeah, it's not a part of life we want to embrace, but we kind of have to, don't we? Because it is it is part of the, the circle of life, right? Yeah. Well, what's the alternative to not accepting it is being in a state of suffering. And, you know, if we don't accept it, then we're going to be in this place of, I don't want to feel this. I want to run from it. Yeah. And there's no running from grief when no. it knocks on your door. Yeah, there is none. And I guess if you don't deal with it, then you're just, you're putting off the inevitable, right? Yeah. It manifests in other ways. You know, the grief is, it's pushed down. And so often I see it come out in people in anger. Okay. And, and, you know, when when they let go of the anger or when they feel the anger, they burst into tears because what was underneath was sadness and grief. So that's why I invite people to allow grief in but also allow joy and learn how to live life and balance the two. It's not just black or white. Yeah. Now, um, my understanding from my conversation with you that the, the, the how you started writing this book was that you'd actually gone through a grief period in, in the sense of infertility. Can you tell us a little about that? Sure, sure. Well, actually, I wrote another book be- before this book, And that one was about the journey of my late husband, Phil, dying. But just before that was us, Phil and I, going through this awful journey of infertility, not Mm. being able to conceive a child. And the grief that that brought was very, very intense. And that was actually what led me to go and study to be a therapist. Okay. Just dealing with that grief. People underestimate how painful that can be. And so in order for me to find meaning and purpose in my life again, I thought I've got to do something because this grief of infertility is just going to knock me out. And I decided to go and study to be a therapist. And that was where I believe I worked through that grief. Okay. And the interesting thing was, it was as if that was the prerequisite for the big one that was to come, which was not long after Phil being diagnosed with terminal cancer. So interesting how our paths are woven, right? Yeah, and sometimes I feel like God prepares us a little bit for things, right? It's, I yeah. mean, that's sort of slightly ironic because you were <clears throat> going through infertility, but in a way... <clears throat> It was preparing you, do you think, on some level for your husband passing? Absolutely, for sure, because by the time that happened, it was as if I'd become a therapist and I was looking (laughs) down on Tanya. It was as if I was observing Tanya, the widow now, dealing with grief. And I knew the process, and that did help me, of course, along with my faith. So that helped me very, very much. And this book, Grief to Greatness, is actually telling the story of life beyond grief. Okay. You know, how to find meaning and purpose and find your own greatness again. So this book has been an accumulation of the years 
following my topsy-turvy ride with that darkness of losing Phil mm. to then bobbing back up again and going, okay, Lord, what is it that you really want for me in life? Mm. Yeah. And you subsequently got remarried. Yes. Which is a, yes. is a happy thing. There's the joy. Yes, yes. And But isn't it interesting, though, I found that having that joy really did bring back the, so much grief again and, you know, the survivor's guilt. How come I can be alive and happy again? And he passed away. So unbelievable what emotions that brought out. But I was very blessed with the a really beautiful man who has been so patient and walked beside me on the grief journey again. And I'm sure probably dealt with a lot of his stuff too, actually, as we were uniting. Mm. Yes, I can imagine that that would be quite triggering because your your first marriage ended because your husband died. It wasn't yeah. divorce or something like that. Yeah. And then you get remarried and that would be quite triggering. Really was. It really, really was. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'd burst into tears all of a sudden when I was really perfectly happy, you know, and it was about just turning it around and going, you know, Lord, I don't know why some of these things have happened in my life, but what I yeah. do know is you've brought joy again to me yes. and I'll trust you. And yeah. that's actually how I got through that, I've got to be honest. And plus Grant is such an amazing human being. <laughs> yeah, but that must have been quite an experience for you, I could imagine, learning to learning to love again after the yeah. grief. Oh, absolutely. And that's why in this book, From Grief to Greatness, there's an entire part on loving again later in life. Because I'm not going to lie, I made a few mistakes and I really encourage people to take that journey within and find out who am I again before you endeavour out there to love and be part of a couple again. Because part of you is lost when you've mm. gone through that intense grief and you don't know what you want and you don't trust yourself anymore mm. either. And it's amazing what grief can do. So, you know, I, I went through many times of self-doubt and not trusting myself. So that journey was learning about trusting my intuition. Okay. What did it feel like when I first laid eyes on Grant? You know, things like that, trusting your intuition. So quite a lot in that book on learning how to love again later in life, whether you've lost through grief or separation, divorce. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's great. So uh, you were writing the book. And uh, my understanding is that um, as you were writing it, you actually lost both your parents. Both of my parents, yeah. I started writing this book probably about five years ago. And then God thought, no, no, I've got a few more chapters for you. I'd like you to talk about this and this and this. And then in the last year and a half, both of my parents have passed on. So hence I've dedicated that book to both of my parents. So that's why I talk a lot about honouring our mother and father especially while we still, we've still got them. And going through that process of letting go, no matter how old your parents are, when they've gone, the grief is awful. You know, that my parents were in their late 80s, mum was 90, and losing them both so quickly, boy, that, that was tough. And, you know, just embrace every moment while you've got everyone with you. That's that's the message I really want to get out there. Yeah. Hey, look, we're just going to go to a song, but we're going to come back and continue this conversation. I've got uh, Tanya Unkovic in the studio with me discussing her book, From Grief to Greatness, and we will continue shortly. This is second chapter of Acts, Easter song. It's quarter to 11, 11 on star, and you're with Lizzie and my guest in the studio with me today is Tanya Unkovich talking about her book, From Grief to Greatness. Tanya, just before the ad break there, um, we touched lightly on the fact that both your parents died recently, mm. and it was your dad who actually died at, uh, while we were in COVID, like, with all the lo lockdowns. Yes, yes. Well, he passed away while everything was fine, and then on the day of his funeral, we were shut down because of that Delta case. And so my father stayed in a funeral home on his own until he was able to be transported up to Dargaval where their final resting place is. So he wasn't even able to be moved out of the funeral home for a while. You know, he had to kind of get a special okay there. And he took a solo ride up to Dargaval for his final burial and the only person that was there was the funeral director and a couple of guys who dug daddy's hole. So that was tough. That is heartbreaking. Horrible. I mean, you know, for many families, being with the body, you know, of, of mm. our loved one, um, you know, going spending time with them. I know I've done that. Um, 
And just not even been able to, you know, because people sometimes say they don't want a funeral, but I often feel that funerals are really about the people that are who are living, not the mm. dead, right? So mm. to have that opportunity, mm-hmm. is it just like that grief's just there? Like, what, what do you do with that? It's so complicated. And thankfully, with my background, I was able to process, but it was probably one of the most painful things ever. Thankfully, I had a lot of time with my father before he passed and while he was in the funeral home. It was interesting. But none of my brothers could get into the country. So they were all locked out and they were all saying goodbye to him via Zoom. Screens. Things like that. It was just a hideous process. And, you know, after he passed, seeing him that way, words can't describe how awful that was. And I feel for so many people out there who went through the same thing or not being able to touch them. I was lucky my father died in my arms. So I'm very, very grateful for that. But I cannot imagine what it was like for people who could not touch their elderly as they were passing away. I feel that is one of the most privileged things we can do is be with our loved ones whilst they're dying and to have that taken away from you and to not be able to feel that. It must complicate your grief. It must somehow create this internal anxiety that I don't know how people are coping with that. Mm. So, you know, I feel like <clears throat> you've got a degree in grief, Tanya. It wasn't one that you chose, but that seems to be the path that you've walked. Just thinking there about complicated grief, because there can be other ways of complicated grief, right? I'm thinking of, say, you had a father that you were at, or a mother or a father that you were out of relationship with, mm-hmm. right? For, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, the relationship's been severed. Mm-hmm. And you don't see each other, and then they die. I know. I mean, that's hard. My my dad, my parents split up when I was really young, and I always used to think, gee, I wonder what I'll feel like when my dad dies, because I didn't spend a lot of time with him. He actually died. He was only in his early sixties when he he died, and I was in my twenties, I think. And I remember feeling grief, and mm-hmm. I remember crying, and I remember, and the sadness of that, feeling happy. That it sounds funny, but that I actually could grieve my mm. father because I always thought I might have been a bit stuck, mm. you know, like because I was disconnected from him. Yeah. And so that that felt like a blessing in the midst of the slightly ironic. But, you know, for people that it is complicated. Well, how- suicide, how how do you get through that? The shock and not being able to say, to say goodbye, the confusion, blaming yourself, um, accidents, I feel privileged that I was able to spend five months with Phil from the time he was diagnosed until the time he passed away. I feel privileged. How do you do it, though, without that? You do have to have help. You do need to get some counselling or mentoring to be able to process that. And you do need to be kind to yourself because it does complicate the grief. Yeah. Now, in your book, one of your titles, I think I read that God is my mate. Yes. Oh, he's my mate too. I know. Oh, I love the way you call him, your mate. How did how did had, your faith with God, your relationship with God get you help you through these these times of grief? <clears throat> Without it, I don't know where I'd be. And uh, Jesus is my mate is actually Phil's line not oh. long before he died. Oh, I had a picture lovely. of Jesus at the end of his bed and I said to Phil, "Can you see him?" And he goes, "Yep, Jesus is my mate." I love that. And not long after he died, a car went past with JC, my mate, on it. Oh, how beautiful. Pretty cool, right? How do you do it? Um, Look, I think that I know that my faith in God is what has got me through everything in my life. And I believe that my ability to accept his will for me, even in the most painful of suffering, Mm. is what has enabled me to get through and to accept Lord, if it's your will that Phil be with you, then I'll accept that. That is actually how I did it. Mm. I've got to be honest with you. And even now, and, and you know, with dad and, and with mum leaving and that, I just try and go to a place of acceptance. Instead of going through that whole process of grief, you know, those five steps and acceptance is the end, I go right there and bring it forward. Wow. Help me to accept Lord. And then I'll work through the bargaining and the anger and all that. But help me to accept your will. That's profound because I think in life, with many difficult things we face, um, learning to let go is the biggest thing. The hardest. Surrender. It's so tough. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. My my audience are quite used to me being honest. Uh, I'd been married nearly 25 years and my ex-husband decided to leave. 
It was, it was grief. It was so mm. painful. It just about ripped my heart out. Um, I'm in a good space now. But I remember somebody I'm very, very close to in that situation said to me, Lizzie, let go. Mm. Because I – and that and that, so letting go was like – I wasn't giving up because I thought, you never know, this might get solved and, you know, but it didn't. But it, But – Letting go um, did something. It was incredibly painful, but I think I think it really helped me on my grief journey because, I mean, I have a very good life now. There's a lot mm. of joy. There's a lot of good things in my life. A lot of people look at me and they go, "Gee, how did you move from there to there?" And probably a relatively short period of time. And it's like, well, I did learn to process my grief, but I also learned to let go. But yeah. I never realised quite until talking to you how what a key that was. You have to make the decision that you want to let go. Making the decision is vital. And I always say to my clients or any audience, what's the alternative? Yes. It's suffering. It's stuck. Yeah. And then you, and you see your pain becomes bitterness and anger yeah. and it festers and that can lead to all sorts of things, can't yeah. it? So, yeah. Look, acceptance is the key to so many things in our lives. And once we understand that, your life will be so much better. It doesn't mean that it's going to be pain-free. No. But it means that you will understand that, okay, I've made a decision, I understand it's going to be painful, and I accept that, and I'll learn to manoeuvre with the pain. But I'm also going to grab life and feel every bit of joy that I can in the process. Amen. I'm all up for that. <laughs> hey, well, you know, as we I said at the beginning of our conversation that, I, you know, our paths had crossed a number of times over the years and I'd been wanting to have a conversation with you. I have to say, Tanya, this has been an amazing conversation today. And uh, you've kindly brought in a few books for us to give away, right? Yes. So three. Three books to um, give away today. Yeah, so the book we're talking about today, From Grief to Greatness, The Art of Overcoming Adversity, Tanya Unkovich. Now, if you'd like to be in to win one of those three, I'm going to give you a couple of options. You can either text 8168 first word star with your name an address, and you can go on the draw to win one of these. Alternative, if you can't text, you can email studio at star.net.nz, studio at star.net.nz. Uh, you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to win, win a wonderful book. And, of course, if people don't win today, where can we purchase these? If you go to my website, tanyaunkovich.com or from grief to greatness.com will also take you to my website. Oh, that's easy. From grief to greatness. Hey, so good to chat with you, Tanya. Lovely Thank to you. be here. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Star. Star. This is Star. Star.